It is now nine minutes past the hour. Let's now turn over to Matt. All right, Ann, thank you very much. The Bush administration raised the nation's terror alert warning to its second highest level on Tuesday, Code Orange, signaling a high risk of attack. But just what kind of activity is happening in Al-Qaeda cells to warrant such a warning? And just how realistic is the threat of terrorist acts on American soil? Peter Bergen is the author of Holy War Incorporated and is one of the only Western journalists to have interviewed Osama bin Laden face to face. Peter, good morning. Good, good to morning. have you back. When, when the government talks about monitoring chatter and seeing a level of chatter equal to what they saw just before September 11th, what's chatter by definition? Well, it's intelligence signals they're picking up. Uh, last year, there was indications that there was an attack, very clearly, very clear indications there was an attack, all sorts of things, videotapes circulating, also people being arrested around the world in places like Yemen and India. Um, unfortunately, everybody was looking in the wrong direction. Now, this time, of course, uh, we're not going to make the same mistake. But I, I think the threat is high in the South Asia area, not here. And, and the, the administration is pretty clear about that. When they're monitoring the communications, though, between the suspected or known terrorist operatives, what way are they using to communicate? It was said years ago we were monitoring satellite uh, cell phones or satellite phones from Osama bin Laden. They know about that now, so how are they communicating? I think, uh, well, we know from, for instance, the 9-11, the final, final uh, days of the 9-11 conspiracy. Bin Laden was actually told in person by one of the conspirators who's now uh, missing uh, that 9-11 was going to happen. He was told on the Thursday before the Tuesday. So the most important communications are happening face-to-face, -face. but uh, there was also communication by code on the phone. Uh, you mentioned satellite phones. I think those are things that they're not using anymore. H how is there any estimate, Peter, as to how many Al-Qaeda cells there are around the world and then here in the United States? Senator Bob Graham, who's, on, who's the head of the Senate Intelligence Committee, who's in a position to know, said in February that there were still 100 Al-Qaeda operatives in this country. Uh, so let's use his opinion rather than mine. Uh, in terms of around the world, uh, we're talking estimates, but uh, tw 25,000 people went through those Al-Qaeda training camps in the last, uh, say, five to ten years. How many of those people are still active in the group, I think, is anyone's guess. But if we even say 10 percent, that makes 2,500 people. Let's talk about Osama bin Laden. Throughout the last year, we've been hearing he's dead, he's alive. Nobody knows rumor today that he is dead. What do you think? Well, I'm, I'm of the empirical school, Matt. Um, there's no evidence he's dead, so why presume he's dead? And I think it would be wishful thinking to presume that he is dead when we don't have evidence that he is dead. So let's presume for the moment that he's alive. Uh, if he's alive, I think he's in very poor health. Uh, and that may be one of the reasons we, we have not seen him. Uh, the last videotape we saw of him, he, he spent an entire half an hour with his whole left side immobilized, suggesting he suffered some kind of wound to it. That's not actually the last videotape we saw. We saw other tapes, but it wasn't clear as to when they were recorded. Right. I mean, the last one, I think we can legit legitimately say this was, that it was filmed, let's say, in November. Right. Uh, he, was, he was immobilized. Uh, he's only 45, and he looked in that videotape like he was a, a man in his late 60s. So he's clearly in poor health if indeed he is alive. If you kill Osama bin Laden or if he dies of his illnesses, does that necessarily cut the head off the monster? Well, it would be a blow to the organization. Uh, obviously, bin Laden would linger on as a martyr, but the first most obvious statement about martyrs is that they're, they're dead. Uh, dead people are generally less effective than people who are alive. Uh, so I think that the leader of the organization would, would departing the scene would be important. However, this is more than a, just simply a cult. You know, when, in cults, when the leader dies, the, the cult usually dies with them. It's somewhere between a cult and a mass movement. And we've got thousands of people who have been trained in these camps. They will continue trying to attack Americans. Shouldn't we also remember that they're very patient? It was 1993 when they first bombed the World Trade Center. They waited another nine years or eight and a half years to try it again. Yeah, and the, the, the second plan to attack the Trade Center was two and a half years in the planning and execution. So just because we haven't heard from them for a while doesn't mean they're out of business. Peter Bergen. Peter, thanks very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's 13 after the hour. Here's Katie.